make it easier if you don't resist and less dangerous. Who are you? What do you want with us? My name is Sinister. Mr. Sinister. Maverick, scan the area. Blue Boy, get those doors open. My name is Mr. McCoy, madam, not Blue Boy. I'll take these. You must like to play cards. I like solitaire, okay? Unless I got someone. Mr. Larry Houston. The incredible voice of Mr. Sinister, Chris Britton. The beast himself, intellectual, George Buza. Next we have the Southern Belle herself, Miss Lenore Zan Rogue. The only gambit, the Cajun we all love, Chris Potter, come on up. And last but not least, the loner adamantium clawed, Cal Dodd Wolverine. <laughs> Welcome, how's everybody doing in the audience? Cal, let's talk about your history. You were a jingle singer, and somebody said they're casting the show. You should come in for it. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I. Yes, I. Um, is this a, is this on? <laughs> yeah, I was a jingle singer. I sang uh, all kinds of commercials and stuff for years, and never did a voiceover. And they called me. Karen Gora called me, as she called everyone and said, uh, we're auditioning for this show called The X-Men. And I said, The Who? She said, The X-Men. And we, they were auditioning for the role of Wolverine. And I said, okay, uh, fine. <laughs> so I, I went, didn't I? I said, who's he? No idea. They showed me a picture when I got to the audition. And I left it on, and they gave me a line to read. And I said, if you like picking on people smaller than you, well, I'm smaller than you. Pick on me. <laughs> and they went, peace, peace and out. And that was the beginning of this whole thing, which is fantastic. Chris, you were just talking a little bit backstage about the process that you had when you went to the audition. I think it was a fantastic story. Would you share that with us? Hi. Um, yeah, well... But it's raining. I'm feeding back. Uh, I think for, for me, first of all, I wanted to be Wolverine. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right. But uh, the day that uh, I was called in and asked to audition for the X-Men, I'm much like Cal, I, did, I didn't know much about the cartoon. Um, and at the time, I was uh, busy on a TV show, and so it wasn't a major focus for me at the time. And I, I remember uh, they, I went in to do the audition, and uh, I, got, I got a little bit of information about his background, and I realized, okay, well, that's Patois. So, as a Canadian, I thought, well, that's French-Canadian, and then it says Louisiana. I'll just mix the two accents, and that should do it. <laughs> So uh, I got to the audition and I, I heard other guys auditioning through the door, which was not really fair in a way. And I just thought, no, no, no. And when I went in, I thought, this is what they're going to want. And <laughs> I read it and I got the, I got the job. Now, I'll, be, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but basically I didn't realize the depth of the X-Men animated series, the depth of the characters and the depth of the writing. Until after it finished it. And how those characters were so human it could change were changing viewers' lives, young young and old. So I became much more proud of my involvement with the X-Men as the years went on. And I had and I was Gambit. Then I wanted to be Gambit in the movies, but uh, Brian Singer brought me in to audition for um, Cyclops. And I thought, I don't want to be Cyclops, he wears that thing. I want to be Gambit. But Gambit's never been in the movies, so I'm the only Gambit. The best. Lenore, how about you? Well, Cher. <laughs> Hi, Sugar. How you doing? LA and uh, I love 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 playing rogue you know when my agent first asked me to go and audition for this new show which was just called the X show they didn't really give it a name in the beginning she said Lenore they want somebody with a husky sexy southern accent and I played a number of those kinds of characters with those voices in the movies up at that point and she said I know it's you but I didn't go to the auditions because I too was doing movies and television and theater and animation wasn't exactly the big thing that it is today. So I didn't, I didn't bother auditioning. And then they got to the final, final auditions, maybe a month and a half later, the callbacks, and she called me again, my agent said, Lenore, they still haven't found Rogue, and I know it's because it's you, so get your ass in gear and get down there. So I went down and I put the headphones on and we were talking to the folks in Los Angeles, and I believe Larry down there was probably one of those people in Los Angeles. And I just said, uh, my daddy liked to kill himself when he found out I was a mutant. <laughs> and I heard this scream go off like, where is she? Don't let her go. You know, and then I, I continued on. I said, I remember when I was 13, I had me a boyfriend. Had me a boyfriend till I kissed him. Poor boy went into a coma for three days. Got so if I touched anybody, it just drove the life right out of him. I don't know, beast. You know everything. What makes us lock the way we are anyway? <laughs> and anyway, I had the job, and that's why I'm here. Yes. Yeah. And Lenore, I just want to say thank you. Lenore is a hero in real life because she's been serving Canada for almost a decade uh, as a public servant fighting for the environment and for her citizens in her district. Yeah. She committed to be here this weekend before she decided to run in a national campaign, which she's leading in the polls in right now. And she didn't flake. She didn't flake on you guys. She made the commitment. She says, I'm going to come here for the fans. I don't want to let them down. So let's have a hand for Lenore for coming 12 hours here. George, you, obviously the writing was great for Beast. He quoted a lot of great people, uh, literary, uh, you know, icons. But it was your voice. You gave a real sophistication and an empathy to him. And talk about how you crafted that voice in the audition. Well, in the auditions, first of all, I was about 11 or 12 years old when the first X-Men comic book hit the stands. 
So when they called me audition for this uh, thing called Project X, and I read the dialogue and I read Beast, I said, this is X-Men. <laughs> so you can't fool me. I want <laughs> And I wanted to be in it real bad. So basically it was all the things that like uh, Byron said, he was a highly educated badass. <laughs> and he was always looking for the uh, peaceful way out until uh, there was no other alternative, at which point he used his brute strength to set things right. And I identified with that right away because that was pretty much where I came from, having grown up in Cleveland. Hey. And uh, I don't know, the rest is just uh, the history. I mean, I did the, uh, the best that I could. I tried to put some uh, intelligence and uh, a little bit of strength into the voice and tone him down. Fascinating. And that's the rest. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Mr. Chris Britton, you, I think, are the most long-running recurring villain on the series. Mr. Sinister, you had uh, a fascinating character who was obsessed with genetics and shaping the future of mutant kind and humanity. Uh, they couldn't have picked a better man for the job. Talk about coming up with that voice and just your experience playing the character and how he grew in later seasons. Well, before I auditioned for uh, Mr. Sinister, I had done a lot of theater. Uh, I'd been at Stratford Festival, uh, done some television and film, and I had put together my first voice tape in 1979 on cassette, which was uh, the way you did it back then. Um, and I had done some animation and uh, commercials and narration and all that, and I had played a few villains. And when I was asked to audition for this, I had no idea, uh, uh, you know, about the X-Men. Um, so I, I seem to recall doing some research and looking into it. And uh, I remember Karen Gura, the casting person, I think she had heard me do, you know, a couple of villains and a couple of other projects. So I went in and did my best villain voice that I could do. And uh, I always remember that with Mr. Sinister, it always took a lot of energy, and uh, I always wear a, just a t-shirt to the sessions, because you end up just sweating, because, you know, there's a lot of energy behind that character, and uh, the name Mr. Sinister, it was just something that I enjoyed getting into, and uh, I, I remember thinking, well, with this character, you've got to have a lot of fun with it. And that's exactly what I did. I remember having a lot of fun with that character. Yeah. Larry, we've discussed this privately many times, but talk about some of the changes that you came up with uh, artistically that really shaped the future of the show early on. Well, for me, for me, I've been, I'm, um, I'm a long time, I'm an old fanboy, as you can tell, but I've been, I've been for like 12 years before the show got on the air. I had been trying to get the X-Men on the air, doing every little thing I could. And I, I, came, I came to the show with the background of uh, being in the in animation business for like 12 years and also being a fanboy since I was in elementary school. So I brought both of those things to the table to try and put together a show that you guys would all love, that I would love if I was uh, like nine years old again. And oh. <laughs> 